One of the most common issues people doubt when moving to any city is where should I live? On paper, many places might seem perfect for you or not, depending on your needs and your circumstances. But it's not until you actually live there that you really get to know what places, what areas really fit your lifestyle. Now, I've been living in Madrid for more than 30 years and I love and live this city every single day. I know most of its neighborhoods and many of the suburbs and I absolutely love to help people decide where they should live when moving to the Madrid metro. Today I'm going to give you a brief overview about Madrid, what the city is like and the different lifestyles that you can find here, as well as some sneaky areas that you wouldn't think of living in but might make you fall in love with. So stay tuned! What's up everybody, this is Pablo Jurado from the Keller Williams Realty Group in the northwest of Madrid. I'm here today to give you a, an overview about Madrid. I'll give you a few facts about the city so you can have a basic information about it and I'll take you to some of the most popular neighborhoods and suburbs in the Madrid metro so you can get a general idea of what it means to live here. And of course, if you're thinking of moving to the Madrid metro, please give us a call, send us an email or fill out the form in our website livinginmadridspain.com. You have the information down below and we absolutely love to help people relocate or invest in the Madrid area. We can make that transition so much easier for you. Okay, so let's dive into it. The first thing you need to know is that Madrid is the capital and most populous city of Spain. The city has almost 3.4 million inhabitants and a metropolitan area population of approximately 6.7 million. It is the second largest city in the European Union, surpassed only by Berlin, and its monocentric metropolitan area is the second largest in the EU, surpassed only by Paris. Madrid lies on the river Manzanares, in the central part of the Iberian Peninsula. Capital city of Spain since the 16th century, it is also the political, economical and cultural center of the country. While Madrid possesses modern infrastructure, it has preserved the look and feel of many of its historic neighborhoods and streets. Its landmarks include the Plaza Mayor, the Royal Palace of Madrid, the Royal Theatre with its restored 1850 Opera House, the Buen Retiro Park founded in 1631, and the 19th century National Library, containing some of Spain's historical archives, many national museums and the Golden Triangle of Art, located along the Paseo del Prado and comprising three art museums, the Prado Museum, the Reina Sofia Museum, which is a museum of modern art, and the Tissenborn Neymitha Museum, which complements the holdings of the other two. Also, Cibeles Palace and Fountain have become one of the monument symbols of the city. As for business, a recent study placed Madrid seventh among 36 as an attractive base for business. It was placed third in terms of availability of office space and fifth for ease of access to markets, availability of qualified staff, mobility with Within the city and quality of life. Its less favorable characteristics were seen as pollution, languages spoken and political environment. We will make specific videos about all these topics if you're interested in them, so please comment down below if you want to know more about them. Okay, now we're moving to the different styles that you can find in Madrid depending on what district or neighborhood you look at. But before I start, Please help us grow this channel by pressing the thumb up if you like this video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell if you don't want to miss any of our upcoming content. So let's start at the very center of Madrid. The central district is very wide and we divide it into different neighborhoods. All of them with its own idiosyncrasy, but all of them have two things in common. They have a huge array of leisure and entertainment venues such as shops, stores, cafes and discos or bars and they are all areas of great influx. But there are people who like this lifestyle and consider it a great option to live. These are the neighborhoods you will find in the center district. Sol is perfect for those who want to be in the middle of the action. You have literally everything at your fingertips, including high rent, of course. Living here, you'll always be surrounded by a huge amount of shops, restaurants, theaters, statues, and endless bars and clubs. Malasagna, is the neighborhood of Universidad, but not locally known as Barrio de Malasaña. This is perfect for those looking for a young, happening and bohemian neighborhood with cheaper rental costs than in Seoul, though still high. Trendy and fun, Malasaña is a, an extremely picturesque neighborhood that is buzzing with life at any time of the day. Not surprisingly, this neighborhood is increasingly popular with young people or those who like having an alternative and busy social life. 
The neighborhood of Justicia is commonly known as Barrio de Chueca. When you think of Chueca, you automatically think of the word freedom. This area is perfect for the LGBTQ community and any fun-loving, outgoing person who wants easy access to bars, clubs, and events. If you're from the LGBTQ community and are lo particularly looking for a neighborhood to accommodate you, then Chueca is the winner. Or if you're just looking for a neighborhood with plenty of internationals who know how to have a great time, then Chueca will certainly not disappoint you. Now, the neighborhood of Palacio, also known as Barrio de la Latina, is perfect for those who want to experience a historic, traditional, and charming side of Madrid. La Latina has a deeply historic charm, and it's the oldest quarter in Madrid. You'll find some of the oldest buildings in the city, cobblestone streets and winding alleyways packed with centenary theaters, along with all sorts of unique bars, restaurants, and taverns, like the Berlin Cabaret, offering a great nightlife experience any day of the week. Now, on the downside, this area can be a little costly, even though most apartment buildings are quite old. I've deliberately left two neighborhoods in the central district, and one of them is my personal favorite. But I will let you discover it in this video about the best five neighborhoods in Madrid. Okay, now we're moving outside the city center, and we're going to go north and east to three of the most expensive and exclusive districts in Madrid the Chamberi district, the Salamanca district, and the Retiro district. Although the three of them have their differences, they have many things in common. Lifestyles are very similar in all of them. As I said, these are the most aristocratic and expensive districts in Madrid, and in the top five of Spain's most expensive areas. So you better not be short of cash if you're thinking of moving here. Despite of this, it's home to lots of people who have kids. So if you do have a decent budget, they are some of the best neighborhoods in Madrid for families. Safe and secure, along with a great offer of both public and private schools, raising kids here is a real pleasure. Even better, houses in Salamanca, Retiro and Chambri are pretty spacious with big rooms, big windows, high ceilings and lots of light, making them feel grand and luxurious. You also get three line avenues, beautiful restaurants and a very laid back atmosphere. If you're not short of cash, this will be a great place to get an apartment in Madrid. As for green spaces, the Retiro Park is in the very heart of the Retiro district and also bordering to the south of, of Salamanca district, where you will also find the Fuente del Berro Park on its southeast boundary. In Chamberí district, there are not so many green spaces, although it is close to Parque del Oeste and Casa de Campo, which is one of the biggest urban parks in Europe. Measuring in at more than 1,500 hectares, it's absolutely great for kids with a lake, a theme park, a cable car, and loads more. So to sum up, Retiro, Chamberí, Salamanca are pretty good options for most people looking to move to Madrid if you can afford it. However, I promised I was going to give you some sneaky areas that most pe people don't think of, and here's a tip for these three districts. If the top neighborhoods of these areas are too costly for you, but you'd still like to move to one of them, take a look at these five neighborhoods. Guindalera neighborhood and north half of Fuente del Berro neighborhood in the east side of Salamanca district, and Pacifico, Adelfas, and Estrella neighborhoods in the southeast side of the Retiro district. You will find that prices there are considerably lower than others like Goya or Almagro, and you're still really close to, the, to all of the main streets and services, so you can enjoy the benefits of these great districts. Another great area to think of if you have enough budget is Chamartin district. To the north of Salamanca district, we find Chamartin, which is home to the city's biggest business district, the Real Madrid Santiago Bernabeu soccer stadium, and the Estación de Chamartin, one of the two main train stations in Madrid that connect the city with the main cities of the rest of the country and other European capitals. Therefore, it's not a surprise that Chamartin is one of the most demanded areas in the city center. Besides the things I just said, this district is also packed with schools, job opportunities and residential zones. It's quieter than most of Madrid barrios, so if you're focused on working rather than partying, you definitely should be considering this neighborhood, especially if you have kids, as most apartment buildings feature communal gardens and swimming pools. As for green areas, 
Parque de Berlín is a beautiful medium-sized park in the very center of the district. Once again, if you're on a budget but you fell in love with this area, take a look at Prosperidad neighborhood. Maybe not as sophisticated as El Viso or Nueva España neighborhoods, but much more affordable though still quite high. Okay, now we are moving to the most exclusive districts to the most affordable, taking in consideration that all of them are neighborhoods that I know and I recommend living in, as they are either newly constructed districts on the rise or older neighborhoods that have been recently remodeled. One of these districts is Arganzuela. Limiting to the north and northeast with the center and retiro districts, Arganzuela has been recently renovated. It's a lively neighborhood full of green areas and historical buildings with all kinds of cultural events. This district also has many schools, both private and public. It is amazingly communicated with the center district and the rest of the city, and it's home to the other big train station of the city, Atocha Station. In Arganzuela is Matadero Madrid Cultural Center, a point of reference of the capital which hosts exhibitions and various activities all around the year. Matadero Madrid is at the east end of the Madrid Rio, one of the newest green areas of the city, recovering the banks of the Mantanares River for the use and enjoyment of the citizens. Madrid Rio is a vast leisure, sports and cultural spot. You've got kids' playgrounds, big mount slides, climbing walls, paddle courts, basket and soccer pitches, cycling lanes, a zip line, a skate park, and even an urban beach. Also, in Arganzuela, you will find the Madrid Railway Museum and the Planetarium, a science and technology museum with lots of exhibition and activities for all ages. At the southeast corner of Arganzuela district, you also have the Tierno Galván Park, a huge park, maybe not as modern as, as Madrid Rio, but also full of great spaces for sports and leisure. This park also hosts one of the coolest summer festivals in the capital, with music from both international and local artists, among great food, children activities, humor shows, and other events that make it perfect to enjoy with family and friends. So. All of these reasons, plus the closeness to the big museums and the Retiro Park, make Arganzuela one of the best districts for those looking for an affordable yet centric and lively area in Madrid. And the last area of Madrid I'm going to talk about before I move to the suburbs it is a mid-range, slow-paced, family-orientated area in Madrid. I'm talking about Las Tablas and San Chinarro. It is the farthest of all to the center of the city and one of the newest residential areas in Madrid. Built in the early 2000s, these two neighborhoods are very popular between young families looking for nice condos in a relatively big state with community services such as swimming pools, gym and playgrounds. The wide offer of schools, hospitals and malls make this area perfect for families looking for a quiet life and still quite near to and well connected to the center of the capital. So now we're moving to the suburbs, but before I start with them, please let me know what you think of this video so far and if you'd like specific content about any of the districts I have just mentioned so far. Now let's talk about Madrid suburbs. First thing you gotta know is that Madrid is connected to the rest of the country by six main highways called A1, A2, A3 and so on. A1 connects with Bilbao and the Basque Country at the north of Spain. A2 connects with Zaragoza and it ends in Barcelona at the northeast of Spain. A3 connects with the city of Valencia on the east coast of Spain. A4 highway runs along through a large part of Andalusia, passing through the cities of Córdoba and Seville and finishing in Cádiz in the south of Spain. A5 goes to the west of the country to Badajoz and ultimately to Portugal's capital, Lisbon. An A6 connects Madrid to the northwest of the country, ending in the beautiful city of A Coruña. And maybe this is one of the greatest things about Madrid. It may not have a coast of its own, but no matter what direction you take, you can be in practically any beach of Spain in about three to five hours by car. And Madrid metro area and its suburbs have grown accordingly usually by the side of these highways, although there are some exceptions to this. This time I'm going to start by the most affordable areas of all. So if you take a look at the south and southeast suburbs of Madrid, around the A5 highway, you will find the biggest suburbs of all. 
Each of them are cities on their own, but they do have a close link to Madrid, as for people who live in the south and go to work to the center. Now, I'm not going to recommend all of these areas, but if you actually are in a budget and want to be near Madrid and very well communicated with the center, here you will find your ideal home for literally less than half the price of the average districts of Madrid. The good thing about these cities, as I just mentioned, is that they are extremely well communicated. It's the only metro area with its own underlying uh, line that connects all of these cities and, at the same time, they are connected to the center of Madrid through the L10 line, which crosses Madrid from the northeast to the southwest. Plus, you also have commuter trains linking these cities to the main stations in Madrid. So. In this southern area of Madrid, I would recommend you some areas of Alcorcón, Mostoles and Leganés as the most nice yet affordable places to live. I will be making specific videos of them all to show the ups and downs of each of them. Now, from the A5, I will jump anti-clockwise to A3, because in A4 there are no re remarkable suburbs that I would really recommend. In A3, I want to talk about Rivas Bacia Madrid, commonly known as Rivas. Here you will find a very young town, actually the youngest town over 20,000 inhabitants among all the region in terms of average of its inhabitants, only 32 years old. So, as you may imagine, Rivas is not only a suburb to supply Madrid with workers, but it's a very lively town with many schools and lots of cultural activities of their own. Other great things about Rivas are it's in the ranking of the 10 cities with the least unemployment and with the highest life ex expectancy at birth. It is the fourth municipality with the lowest poverty rate and the third with the fewest empty homes. It's only 15 kilometers away from Madrid and it's really well communicated both by bus, commuter train and metro line. It's not as affordable as the south areas I just mentioned, but it's definitely cheaper than the A1 and A6 suburbs that I will talk about now. With the average price at 2.4 or 2.5 thousand euros per square meter. So overall, we could say that Rivas Bacia Madrid is a great place to live, especially with kids. We're heading towards the end of our Madrid metro, metro area review, and I've left the top notch suburbs for the last, and they are both around the A1 and A6 highways. Once again, I'm jumping over the A2, as this area is very similar to the south area I mentioned before. Similar lifestyle, similar prices, but this is only just a personal opinion, it's not as modern and well communicated as the south, although it's much closer to the airport, that's true. Now, in A1 I want to mention two areas in particular, first being the Alcobendas and San Sebastián de los Reyes area. These are two different towns, separated only by two streets. They are both so similar that I speak of them as one only suburb area. Basically, they are both mid and mid high income towns with great transport options, both internally and with Madrid city. Although they have always been considered commitment cities, there are also employment opportunities thanks to the economic boom experienced by both municipalities, being home to more than 3,000 companies, many of them multinational companies. But they are also a shopper's paradise, as major international companies such as IKEA, Leroy Merlin, have branches in its mega park and Plaza Norte malls. It is no surprise that they have grown so much in the last decades, becoming the preferred choice for many young and expat families. And the other area I must mention is La Moraleja. So actually, although the A1 highway separates both areas, La Moraleja administration belongs to Alcobendas, but believe me if I tell you that they are two different worlds. La Moraleja is one of the most exclusive areas in Madrid metro, full of mansions among other luxury homes and condos, La Moraleja is home to one of the most prestigious golf clubs in Europe that hosted the Golf World Championship in 1992 and several Spanish Opens and Championships. As you may imagine, this area is also where some of the most prestigious international schools welcome students from all over the world. Its proximity to the Madrid airport is also another advantage to this suburb that is only accessible to the wealthiest pockets. And last but not least, we're moving to the A6. 
where we will talk about some of the best yet expensive suburbs in the Madrid metro. I will start with Aravaca and Bozuela de Alarcón. Aravaca and Maldemarín still form of the city of Madrid, but the fact that they are at the farthest side of the Casa de Campo and so close to Pozuelo make them feel as a suburb and not as a Madrid district. Like Pozuelo, Aravaca and Valdemarín include areas where the upper and high class live, with several international schools and quiet villas and home streets, among with other luxury facilities and clubs. And Pozuelo is one of the richest towns in Spain, with a lot of expats living here, as there are many offices of well-known international companies. The whole Pozuelo is a great place to live if you like a slow-paced life with many green areas, no matter what kind of home you prefer. But if you want the best of the best, at the south of Pozuelo you will find Somosaguas. Just like La Moraleja, Somosaguas is an exclusive residential area with luxury standalone villas and surrounded by golf and sports clubs, where lots of famous people live, such as TV or movie stars, football players, and other artists. World Cup winning German midfielder Toni Kroos still lives in La Finca. Do you dream living like a world champion? The last area I'm going to talk about is formed by three towns which are pretty similar in their size and their average income and lifestyle. I'm talking about Majadahonda, Las Rozas and Boadilla del Monte. Around 15 to 20 minutes away from Madrid to the northwest, these three towns are exclusive areas with large, high standard apartments, semi-detached houses and landscape villas. With a strongly North American influence, there is an international choice of banks, shops and eateries. There are also several international schools in the area and plenty of organized sports and social facilities. And this is it! I hope you have enjoyed this video and that you have learned a little bit more about Madrid and what you can expect when moving here. As you have seen, there are so many things you can do in Madrid, so many lives to be lived here. You will never ever run out of things to be done here. But we don't want you to get stuck in a traffic jam in the wrong area or to end living in an area you would be regretting to have moved to in a short time. And the only way that we can help you to find your perfect location from so many different areas with their own flavor is you reaching out to us. Give us a call, send us an email, or fill out the form in our website. You have the information down below in the description. However you do, we got you covered when moving to the Madrid Metro. Also check out our other videos and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the, the ring bell to receive notifications about all our upcoming content. Until the next video, catch you later!